Hello my name is Albert Einstein and I want to tell you a little about my life. It's peculiar, looking back on my life, to think of where I began and where I ended up. Born in Ulm, in the kingdom of Württemberg and the German Empire on March 14, 1879, my early years gave little indication of the journeys I would undertake, both physically and intellectually. The objective of this biography is to tell you about significant events in my life and my scientific work. What did life and the universe mean to me and what was the key to my happiness? Life, in its vast complexity and nuance, has always been a wondrous puzzle to me. It's a journey of inquiry, a dance of the intellect and the heart, and a continuous pursuit of understanding. To me, life is less about the answers we find and more about the questions we dare to ask. From my earliest days, I was consumed by curiosity. I wanted to know how the universe worked, why the stars shone, and what lay beyond the horizon. This sense of wonder has been the driving force of my life, propelling me into realms of thought that few had ventured into before. In this sense, life was a canvas of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. But beyond the scientific inquiries and theoretical explorations, life held deeper, more existential questions for me. What does it mean to be human? What is our purpose in this vast cosmos? While my scientific pursuits offered glimpses into the workings of the universe, these deeper questions nudged me towards philosophy, music, and human connections. Second, and perhaps more profoundly, it was the connections I forged with others. From deep philosophical discussions with friends to playing my violin, from advocating for peace and human rights to simple moments shared with loved ones, it was these human connections that gave my life richness and meaning. Happiness, I believe, is not a destination but a journey. It's not about what you have, but how you perceive the world around you. It's the ability to find wonder in the mundane, to seek beauty in the chaos, and to cherish every moment, no matter how fleeting. In the grand tapestry of the cosmos, our lives are but brief flashes of light. But in that fleeting moment, we have the power to seek meaning, to forge connections, and to leave a lasting legacy. To me. That has always been the true essence of life and the key to happiness. My father. As I, Albert Einstein, reflect on my life, the foundational roles my parents played in shaping the man I became are undeniable. Paulina and Hermann, despite the challenges and nuances of our relationship, were pivotal in my personal and intellectual journey. My father, Hermann, was a man of many virtues. He was an entrepreneur, running an electrotechnical business with my uncle Jakob. From him, I learned the nuances of hard work, perseverance, and innovation. His ventures weren't always successful, and our family faced financial hardships, but through it all, Hermann displayed resilience. His dedication to his work and his ability to navigate through challenges with unwavering determination left a lasting impression on me. But it wasn't just his professional life that impacted me. I recall a memory from my early childhood when he introduced me to a compass. Needle's mysterious movement, guided by an invisible force, triggered a sense of wonder in me. It was a simple gesture, yet it set me on a path of curiosity, urging me to unravel the universe's enigmas. My mother. My mother, Pauline, was the heart of our household. She was a cultured woman, skilled at playing the piano, and had a deep appreciation for the arts. From her, I inherited a love for music, especially the violin. Those evenings when she played the piano and I accompanied her with my violin are moments I cherish deeply. Music became a solace for me, a retreat from the world, and I owed it to her. Pauline was also my pillar of support during tumultuous times. When I struggled with the educational system or faced other challenges, she stood by me, providing guidance, love, and understanding. Her faith in my capabilities, even when I was riddled with doubt, propelled me forward. Our family was of Jewish descent, but our household wasn't deeply religious. It was, however, rich in culture and knowledge. Both Hermann and Pauline encouraged an environment of inquiry. They nourished my inquisitiveness, allowing me to question, explore, and learn. Of course, like any parent-child relationship, ours wasn't devoid of disagreements. There were moments of tension, especially during my rebellious teenage years when I chose to depart from the traditional educational bars. Yet, through all our differences, the bond remained intact, underlined by a profound mutual respect. Reflecting on those years, I realized that while I might have ventured into the realm of relativity, 
quantum physics, and cosmology, it was the foundational lessons from Hermann and Pauline that truly grounded me. Their values, their struggles, their aspirations, they all played a part in the tapestry of my life. And for that, I remain eternally grateful. Child. As a child, the world around me was a canvas of questions. One of my earliest memories was when I was around five, and my father Hermann showed me a simple compass. To anyone else, it may have seemed just an ordinary object. But to me, it was magic. The way the needle moved because of some unseen force fascinated me. That compass set the stage for my life's work, a relentless quest to understand the universe's mysteries. Contrary to popular belief, I wasn't always a model student. Yes, I was deeply inquisitive and passionate about certain subjects, but the educational system of my time, particularly in Munich, where my family moved in 1880, didn't resonate with my spirit. The road methods, the strict discipline, they clashed with my inner curiosity. The schools I attended wanted me to learn, but I wanted to understand. At home, though, my intellectual fires were fueled. A family friend, Max Dalmut, would often dine with us. Seeing my thirst for knowledge, he introduced me to various scientific and philosophical texts. I devoured them, challenging myself to go beyond what was taught in schools. By the age of 12, I had embarked on a self-study of advanced topics, even teaching myself geometry and calculus. And remember the compass. But not everything was about study. I cherished the time I spent with my younger sister, Maya. We were close confidants, sharing thoughts, dreams, and laughter. In those early years, the bond between us was an anchor, providing me with warmth and companionship amidst the academic pressures. Teenager. Life, however, threw its challenges. My relationship with formal education became more strained as the years progressed. By my teenage years, the disconnect between my way of thinking and the rigid teaching methodologies became so pronounced that I left the Leopold Gymnasium in Munich. I needed a place where my thoughts could roam free. Switzerland beckoned. The liberal educational approach of the Swiss schools appealed to me. In Arau, I completed my secondary schooling, and the environment there was a breath of fresh air. I thrived, not just academically, but also personally, 